Romans chapter 8. God's security. You know, at times like this, we need security, don't we? We need to know that we have this security. And it's, it's so important. I know there's different people that are thinking different things and so forth. But there's no reason for us to ever fear. We, it's just uh, God wants you to know, and he never wants you to fear. He wants you to have that security in your heart. Regardless, we don't want to be stupid and go out here and play around with this stuff. But we do want to have that sweet peace and joy down in our heart that God wants us to have. Several years ago, I, I did a series of messages. And, and of course, one of them was on a, the new life that God gives us and so forth. And in chapter 8, and I want to just uh, read the one verse to start with, and then we'll go from there, okay? Verse 28. I think that's one of the greatest verses in the Bible. But it's hard for you to understand. It's hard for me to accept sometimes, too. He tells us very plainly. As you take this virus and this thing that's going on now. He says, and we know. I think that's the, one of the greatest words that God puts in the Bible. He never puts you in doubt of anything. He never thinks, uh, you never have to say maybe or might. Uh, you know. He says, we know that all things, not some things, but all things. We know that all things, that's everything that ever happened in your life. That's everything that ever happened to my life. And we know that all things work together for what? Good. You know, I was telling somebody that something didn't happen and go right. And I said, well, he's got something better for you down the road. Because they work together for the good, so it's going to be better down the road. If it didn't work together right here and you didn't understand it quite here, there's something better down the road. Because this is working together for the good. For those who are living for the Lord. And trusting in him by faith. And he said the just shall live by faith. And faithful to him. These things are going to work out together for the good. I don't want to spend too much time on that verse right now. Uh, to them that what? There's something else in there. That love God. That love God. Do you really love him? Do you really love God? Do you want to know him more about him? Do you want to serve him? Do you want to read his precious love letters that he's given us in the Bible? Do you want to be faithful in fellowship with God's people? Do you want to be a good witness out in this world? That's loving God. He's left us here for that light. And thank God for it. I love God to them who are called according to to what? His purpose. His purpose. Not ours. His purpose. His purpose. So we see that. And uh, let's, let's just go to Lord in prayer just a minute here. Father, thank you for this word. And we pray that you just bless it this time together and so forth. And speak to our hearts through the precious word of God and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Who are called. There's, there's some things at the beginning of this chapter that I'll just run through quickly. I don't want to take up too much time. I'll end up here too long. And uh, first of all, he talks about we have a new law now. We're not, Mark talked about the commandments of the Lord. And that, those are good. Those are ten principles that should be in our life, the commandments are. But he says here we got a new law. we got a new law in the first few verses there he talks about. There's no condemnation in verse 1, he says, to those who are in Christ, you know, Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Then he goes on, for the law of the Spirit of life. Now, there is important in verse 2 there. And Christ Jesus has made me free from what? The law of sin and death. Made me free. So we got a new law now. We're free from that, Okay. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, trying to keep the Ten Commandments and all that. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned to sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we got a new law. I've talked on this and preached the whole message on it, but I'm not going to today. We've got a new law. We've got a new Lord. We've got a new, when we got saved, Jesus Christ should be Lord of your life. Lord Jesus Christ. He should be the one that determines everything in your life that goes on in your life. We've got a new Lord. And he talks about that in verse 5. He says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. It goes on. For, and it goes on. I'm going to skip some of this, okay, so we can get down in here and get to what, what I want to get at. Look in verse uh, 9, if you will. But we are not in the flesh. Remember what it, the Bible tells us very plainly. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are. Uh, uh, and he tells us over in, in, in chapter 6 of Romans that we're dead to sin. We're dead to sin. That new spirit is in us there and so forth. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You know when the spirit of Christ comes in you. You don't understand everything, but you know it. Because he'll start teaching you. He'll start leading you if you want to serve God. And he'll start leading you. Mark talked about the light this morning. Thy word is a lamp in my feet and a light into my path. It's the word. He leads you but according to the spirit and the word of God. He tells us up there in, in, in another verse, for his, uh, verse 14, he says, For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we, we, we've got a new Lord now that, that t t takes and takes care of us. Now, he says, if any man have not spirit, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So we've got a new Lord, okay? And that's all. And then we've got a new life. We've got a brand new life. I've already quoted 14th verse there, but he says, for you have not, look at verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father, Papa Father, Daddy Father, and it's wonderful. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that you, we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. I'm not going to go on down in there. There's a lot to that, but you can read it and get into it. We've got to listen. We've got a new law. We've got a new Lord. And we've got a new life. I love that new life, don't you? Amen. It's a wonderful life. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a wonderful life. Now I want you to just turn over there a little bit. We're going to get in some verses here. God's promise for the family. God's promise for the family. This is his promise. This is his security. I read this verse. We know that all things work together for God, to, uh, for the good to them that love God. And listen, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Always remember that according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to what? The image of the Son of God. That's what he's doing with you and me every day as we yield our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. He begins to conform our bodies in the image of the Lord Jesus, our minds and our hearts. We know Paul talked about in Philippians, we teach it on Wednesday night, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He says it. This in the memory told us here, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. He wants us to know that, and so predestinate to be conformed in the image. Uh, also, did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. He wants us to be part of His family and firstborn of many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. He called you to do something, to be something, and to go somewhere, to do something. Called, and when he called them, he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Those three things. 
He gives us a faithful promise. He can't break that promise. He cannot break it. And we know, verse 28, and we know that promise cannot be broken. Then he goes on in the same verse, verse 28b, it says, a fruitful product, all things, not some things, but all things, all things. Then he finished the process in verse 29 and 30 there to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said he justified us. Not only did he justify us, but there'd be a day that we'd be glorified with him, of course. God's protection. He talks about God's promise to the family, first of all, in that one verse there, and then verse 29 and 30 finishes off. But God's protection for the family. It's so important that you know that you have a hedge about you. You have angels encamped around about you. He keeps you out of trouble all the time. He keeps you out of being hurt many times. You don't even know nothing about it. But he's always going to take care of you. God, if, if you can protect your family in any way, you're going to do it. You're going to do everything you can to protect your family. God can do anything. And he knows it. But he can take care of you in any situation. If we get this virus, you know, we're going to depend on him to take care of us. We don't want it, but he's going to take care of us. And I, I've seen it happen already in my family. I've seen it happen. I don't have it, didn't have it. My wife doesn't have it, so don't get to thinking about that. But uh, they had a few cases down at the Crown, of course. But Isaac come out negative, you know. But he had, they said he probably had it and got over it, you know. That he, because he's strong, young, and like that. He had some of the symptoms and all, but they said he's negative. Everything's fine with him. But, you know, God, most young people, you know, it's only 1% that, that, that ever, it really dies in it, with it, you know, 1%. It, 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 you got to think about it, put it in perspective, you know. God is going to take care of it. God's protection for the family. Look in verse 31, would you? What shall we then say to these things? Then? What are we going to say? What God's given us, a faithful promise, a fruitful product, and a, and a finished process. What are we going to say about it? Look what he says. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Think about that. You think about that. God's on your side. You've got the greatest protection in the world. I've got the greatest protection. And anybody that truly born again, blood washed, and Bible saved, is on God's side. And God, God's responsibility is to take care of you. He, say, he, he plainly tells you his responsibility. You say, well, what about these people that die? And, 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 you know, well, that's the best thing that could ever happen to them when they go to heaven. But I'm not saying they wanted to go. And I'm not saying many times people die and don't understand, don't, don't, can't explain it. I don't try to explain when somebody dies. A good person, you know, good people die too. We've had them die out of this church. Good people. And you wonder why. God knows what's best. And he said it's the best. It's, and they're going to, whatever the disease was or whatever it was, they're going to get a perfect body. And no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more, none of that stuff. And no more sickness, no more cemeteries, none of that stuff. God is going to take care of them. He not only, he said, who is for us, but who, look what he said, who paid the price for us. He paid a price. We wasn't re uh, redeemed with such things as silver and gold and vain conversation and traditions in the old time. None of that. We were redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb of God without blemish or without spot. Look what he says in verse 32. He that spared not his own son, his own son, but delivered him up for us all, for all of us. For God so loved the world, all mankind. Majority of the world don't know that. They've never accepted that. They think that we're worshiping a pie in the sky somewhere. But we know better. He lives in our heart. Remember what he said? If any man have not the spirit of God, he's none of his. Amen. He lives in my heart. He lives in your heart. I walked with him last night. I walked to talk with him this morning. 
but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also, with the son, this is your protection, freely give us what? Everything you need in life, he'll give you. He'll make a way for you to get everything you need in life, not our wants, not the lust of the flesh as we look out to this old world and old flesh starts lusting after things. Every one of us got more than what we need. I look at everybody. You're dressed real nice, you know. And I, I don't believe any of you is hungry. And I'm not. I should say that, and I won't say nothing about anybody. <laughs> but all of us got plenty to eat. We got, everybody's got a home to live in, a bed to sleep in. It's warm when it needs to be warm. It's cold when it needs to be cold. All these things are there. He said... If he spared not his own son, if he spared not his own son, freely give us all things. That's the next thing. Who shall charge us? Who's going to point a finger at us and charge us? That's so and so and so and so. Look what he says in verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God? Who should point a finger at any, anything? Point a finger at one of God's people. God said, that's my child. I paid for their sin. And I'm going to take care of them. They've got the best father in, that ever was created. He wasn't created. The best father that they could have. They have the only savior in this world that they could have. And I've got a witness inside of them, the Holy Spirit of God. That as they get out of bed this morning, when they go to bed at nighttime, that witness says, you're mine. I bought you. I paid for you. I shed every drop of my blood for you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll always give you what you need. You're mine. You'll always be mine. Nothing, nothing can change it. Who's going to lay anything to the charge of God's children? He's something else, God is. It is God that justifies. It is God that justifies. And he goes on to verse 34. Who shall condemn us? They always, people try to say something about Christians. They'll do it. He said they hated me. Remember in, in uh, John 17, I just preached it in, in maybe last week. He said they hated me. They don't dislike you. They hate you. This world system hates everything you do. Everything you do. Don't you ever think they don't. They might say something nice to you when they see you, but they truly hate you if they don't believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They hate you. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, he said. I've overcome the world. You don't have to worry about it. Verse 34 there. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Look what he's doing. Who also maketh intercession for us all the time. He's praying for you. He's praying for me. Always he prays for us. And every once in a while, you, could, you should feel it and know it. He reaches down those arms of love and puts them around you. And says, you're mine. I'll never let you go. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You're all mine. I paid for you, bought you, and paid the price in full. You're mine. I love the Lord, don't you? Sometimes we ought to just tell him, Lord, I love you. I love that song Terry sang. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one. Nobody, nothing in this world ever cared for me like Jesus. What a Savior, what a God we have. We see, we see the, the th two things, that God's promises for the family, and then we see God's protection for the family. But look at this, what compassion, what compassion. God's passion for the family. 
No one at that, I don't know why Terry sung that song. She picked it out, but that was exactly what I would have asked for. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Now he's going to tell you how much he cares for you. He's going to tell you how much he loves you. And you're going to know that in your heart because that love should be shed abroad in your heart. You can know that love. You can feel that love. You can live that love because that love is everlasting. Look what he says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or phantom or nakedness or pearl or sword? He said, these, all these things that's going on right now, that didn't separate you from the love of Christ. He didn't stop loving you because this pandemic would come. He didn't stop loving you because they require all these things you're supposed to do and have to do. He said, my love is just as strong for you as it's ever been. I'm there with you just as strong as I've ever been. Go back to the first time when you got saved and how exciting it was when you realized that your sins have been forgiven. You realized that you was clean for the first time in your life. You realized when Christ came into your heart through the Holy Spirit, you jumped with joy. And then you went to church. And you went to church and you, you didn't know that I didn't. Didn't know I'm in a church. A couple of men had visited me, it's all. But I felt at home there. And when that preacher, little old preacher, he got to preaching and talking about Jesus, it's something inside of me just began to jump and cry. It's just that that's, that's my Savior now. That's my, my Savior. I'm in that family now. I learned later on all about it. And you know the best thing I learned later on? That nothing in the world could ever separate me from that love. Nobody can separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing or nobody. And he goes on to say there, you know, in verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We're already in that number. We're in that number. You're in that number already. I'm in that number already. There's a mansion waiting for you up there. One of these days, God's going to send his angels and take you home, just like he's going to do me. Wouldn't that be an awful thing to get to go home to heaven? Wouldn't that be an awful thing that, that you'd have to leave this old wicked world? We don't go out here and, and say, force ourselves to die or to commit suicide. But we can think of that blessed assurance, that security in my heart. If something happens to me, I'm telling you, I'm going home. I've lived 45 years in his family here. But I'm going to live an eternity up there with him. Amen. And when I get home, it's going to be welcome home, son. Amen. God said, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious. He didn't say it's good. He said they're precious in his sight, the death of his saints. We have a wonderful Savior. We have the greatest security in the world. We have the greatest protection. We have the greatest provision. We have the greatest presence of the Lord Jesus Christ than anything in all this world. Who can separate us? Who loved us? Look in verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that what? More, he didn't say you're conquerors. He said you're more than conquerors. What he's saying is more than, more than anything that you can imagine. That love. We're more than conquerors. More. That love. I'm talking about God's son's compassion. And how much he loved us. No one ever cared for me like Jesus did. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Jim, you wind that. Is it a tape or something that Terry sang off of? 
Wind that thing back up and when we get through here, I want you to listen to that song. And I want you to listen to it well. It's got a message in it. One of the greatest messages that ever was. Terry sings it so well. Who loved us. What can separate us, he said. What can separate us? Look in verse 38 and 39 what he says. For I am persuaded that neither death, there you go, lie, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. He said, maybe I didn't name everything. Any other creature. Any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. What a wonderful Savior we have. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He said, I want to get, give you assurance I want you to have that blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Our salvation born from above. Uh, what a Savior. What a God we have. He said, I want you. He, he writes it. Mark talked about sworn everything you need in this book. But it's right here. It's something you might need right now. You ought to read this chapter. Read it through and just, just get what God gives you through it. I preach from this chapter and I preach from all this book and everything. But this chapter here has always did something for me. You said, well, that's wonderful. But chapter 10 in Romans did something for me 45 years ago, too. He's, I love that chapter, too. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be. He didn't say that maybe thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I did that about 2 o'clock in the morning, 45 years ago, Amen. August the 25th. He's never left me. Amen. He's never failed to protect me. He's never failed to provide for me, my family too. He's never left me. He can't leave me. He can't not leave me. He will not leave me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. He loves you that same way. What a Savior. Nothing can separate us. God's love is untouchable. God's love is forever. He said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. God's love is precious. To have that love shed abroad in your heart is the most precious thing you'll ever have in your life. And know that you're saved. And know that you've got him. Remember that. I just thought we needed to hear something about his security, his love, and his passion. He's not going to let you down. He can't let you down. He never will let you down. 